I'm sure you would have touched on it. Probably worth going into a little bit more detail to make sure you get your head around it. Look, there's basic steps. Um, what are my alternatives? Work out who are the key players in this job that we need to deal with. So key players is stakeholders, aren't they? Um, we need to go out and select measurements and collect all the cost and benefit elements. So in other words, we need to get the data that we can refer to. It's sounding a little bit like Six Sigma, isn't it? And you've got to go and collect data to be able to make these assessments. You need to predict the outcome of the costs and benefits over the duration of the project. So you might be talking about installing a new server for whatever purpose, and you might say, right, the, the life, the projected lifespan of the <coughs> server is going to be five years. So we need to do some predictions. What are going to be the returns on having that server compared to the costs up front to get it? You need to put everything into a dollars and cents value, so that you've got you're comparing apples to apples. Applying a discount rate if you're going to be depreciating over time, you may have to apply a discount rate. Calculate net present value on project options. And a sensitivity analysis is when you start having some sort of a matrix, and spreadsheets are great for this, if you want to know, well, look, what's going to be the effect? If I spend an extra thousand dollars on the initial hardware, what will that mean to the overall cost of the whole project over time? So it gets a little bit complex, but you need to know what the economic feasibility is. If this isn't going to pay off for you, then we don't want to go down that track. Legal feasibility, we're going to keep going back to this one, and next year if you're moving on to the diploma, we're going to spend more time on legal aspects again, because you can't escape the fact that we are dealing with 